Daniel, uh, this is something that's rather mm -hmm. funny to hear about. Tell us what's going on. So, Bernie Sanders has, you know, we have complained about his lack of action, his lack of fighting Biden, a whole bunch of things that we wish he could have done different. However, we live in the timeline that we live in. However, Bernie Sanders, in a very unexpected uh, step, has actually put his foot down on something. And that is actually Elizabeth Warren's throat, which is kind of nice, reassuring, a little, yeah. little something, a little refresher, like a little, uh, like a little drink, perhaps. Uh, Bernie Sanders has thus far not encouraged former Vice President Joe Biden's team to consider Elizabeth Warren as his running mate, despite longtime ideolo ideological alliance with the Massachusetts Senator. Now, I'm going to stop right here. This article is from The Hill. Uh, very much, I, I appreciate like rising with Kim and uh, everyone else. But I want to stop at this first sentence, or the second sentence, really. Uh, what what long-standing ideological alliance? You mean the one that the news media has pretended has existed that people like us years ago have been like, oh, they're not really that similar. They just kind of are, because everyone else is so far right, the fact that she's not completely so far right makes her look like Sanders? No, they have very different ways of doing things. She's not a progressive the way Sanders is. We saw that play out entirely mm -hmm. during the last election. She has terrible political instincts. She doesn't know when to fight, when to not fight, when to back off, when to not back off. And she doesn't have a spine. That's also a big thing. Yep. Um, at least Sanders would stand and fight for certain things. Uh, so I have great issue with saying, despite his longstanding idea, like, they're not the same. They don't have the same ideas. Anyway, Sanders has declined to back some liberals' efforts to convince the former vice president to select Warren as number two. We already know that Warren's not getting picked. I'm quite sure that it, a deal was cut with maybe A.B. Klobuchar or someone else that was running yeah. as a reason that they dropped out. I'm sure the same reason that Pete Buttigieg, they're all, they all got promised something. All got promised something, and the fact that they're very that Biden's been very specific that I, it's, I'm not going to say it's a black woman, but I'm going to say it's a woman, but I'm going to be very clear that it's a black woman for the Supreme Court makes me think it's a white woman that he's looking for, just because that's how they're, they're pretty straightforward. Anyway, but it's not going to be Warren <laughs> because again, when Warren the the place where Warren could have been to make that work would have been on Super Tuesday, which again we covered. She didn't pick a side, and she lost everything by choosing nothing. So we're going to continue. Warren has frequently been mentioned in speculation by news media who don't know what the hell they're talking about, about Biden's running mate with liberals saying that she served as effective concession to progressives. I love it. It's like, oh, thanks for like giving me a gift that without using my voice. It's like, oh, someone else thinks that I like something, and therefore they're going to act on that caricature to make a decision on my behalf without even asking me. That's what this is saying right here. <sighs> anyway, with progressives who are disappointed. By the way, Sanders did better than Warren, so what kind of concession is that? <laughs> I don't get that. Anyway, um, while the two senators were are natural, no, they're not. They're not natural allies. Why do people keep saying that like it's a true statement? Because they're friends, Dan. They're uh, friends. They're friends, yeah. So Bernie's again, friends Biden, with everybody, apparently, though. Yeah, That's, apparently. I mean, come on. They briefly clashed during the primary race over reports that Sanders told Warren that woman could not be elected president. I love that. They, they briefly clashed. I mean, the entire snake emoji started. That, that was a pretty big, but oh, just a yeah. brief clash. Remember when I shot you? It was a brief shot. Remember, remember when that happened? Remember when brief. I told that lie about you? Yeah. <laughs> that it disparaged you and maybe affected the, uh, the race? Ah, brief clash. They're so <laughs> elegant. Look at these allies holding each other together so well. Oh, my God. This is so good. Anyway. While the two set, all right, uh, they clashed, um, culminating in a viral moment after a debate, which Warren confronted Sanders over the agreement. Again, they literally couldn't have framed this story more wrong. The only thing that I like about this is that Sanders put his foot down with Warren and said, Warren, uh, you're not my friend anymore, or something. I can't do voices like Kit Kat. <laughs> there you have it. Yes. Oh, my, that's my thing with this. That's, that, that, that's, that's yeah, my market. Yeah, uh, that's Kit's market. So, but this is my <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, that's I right. Just, that's right. Stay in your lane, yeah, Daniel. I don't like how mainstream <laughs> outlets are pretending that they're even close ideologically. They're not. They're not at all. They're about as different. They're more different than Democrats and Republicans are, generally speaking. Yeah. Different. But she's well, there still, are a lot of, there are a lot of, Two, two differing yeah, but idea, ideas that are different from Democrats. From the point of view of like those people there. writing these articles, they're like, well, from the center, all I could see are communists that way and uh, fascists that way, and then me. I'm right. 
<laughs> and so that's that's what they're writing from this point of view. So if you don't know anything about what's happening, you come across that Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are close ideologically, which is a which is fake. That's a that's but that's fake what news. but that's what all of yeah. the news says. So of course that's what that's what the belief is. Yeah. It's, so they're so. spreading fake news about someone who's not going to be VP, who's getting hit by someone who lost an election that isn't ideologically connected to the person he's talking to, and then they just reference a fight that they call like a brief little thing that was actually pretty major. I'm very upset with how this was written. They go on to talk about stuff completely unrelated to the article, but, you know, that's what we got. Kira. Um, so I get this. Okay, so I, I think I read this a little bit differently than most people read it. Uh, so what I'm getting from just listening to y'all is that Sanders is like withholding a, uh, a, 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 a request or, or a suggestion to have Warren be Biden's VP. The way I read it, honestly, is that Sanders is just like, I'm out. Like, that's kind of how I've been reading Sanders in general mm -hmm. um, recently. I just kind of get the sense that, like, every every statement made by Sanders is made by his campaign. You know, like, recently, are, have you guys noticed that or is it just me? Yeah. Where I kind of feel like Sanders isn't really doing or saying much of anything. Um, he's tapped out. Yeah, I think. He's tapped I, out. Yeah, that, that's that's what I was yeah looking for. I think uh, as, a, as a final note for this story, um, seeing how this entire primary turned out, and again, boy, was I wrong because I had hope, and hope is the first pass of disappointment. Um, you know, Sanders obviously had a lot more fire to his campaign in 2016. Looking at this now in 2020, there were some clear signs that perhaps maybe all of us had our rose-colored glasses on, and you know there were a lot of other people who did call it out. I thought that there was some other plan, some sort of counteraction that Sanders was ready for, but I think at this point was his statement to Warren, hey, I, I on a rare point, I'm going to agree with Bernie Sanders uh, saying this to Joe Biden. Like, Look, Warren is a horrible choice for a VP. I agree with that because Warren uh, never fights unless she's assured that there's going to be a victory. She doesn't weigh in on anything unless she knows that she's going to have support from the establishment. So, again, nothing can really save the Biden campaign, and how I'm looking at this is no matter who Biden picks as a VP, as a final note, I am not voting blue no matter who. I will not support Trump. I'm voting third party, and I haven't decided who I'm going to vote for. Daniel, real quick, was one final note. So just to reiterate, just to go with Kier, because I agree with the, the way we're framing this. If I didn't come out that way, yeah. So let's just talk about it again. Sanders is just saying, I'm tapped out. I'm not going to help you, Warren. You backstab in purse. You backstab in snake, let's say. Uh, you abandoned me. And then the news media is – everyone's pulling this from their own selfish angles. Bernie Sanders is he's tapped out. He's done. He doesn't want to be part of anything. Warren's Warren's like, hey, can you maybe make me VP? If you saw her when I was on Rachel Maddow, that she was like, yes, yes, please, 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 please make me VP. Please, please. No one's gonna make her VP. It's not even a, she's not even in the discussion. She's not even in the room. She's not even the same building of the discussion of who's gonna be. It's already been decided, and it's not her. She threw away any political capital she did when she didn't do anything on Super Tuesday. The fact that this story is even happening right now just shows how stupid the Democratic Party is, how stupid this contention process is, and how thirsty the media is for some story about something. It's not going to work, and hell, even Wall Street doesn't want Warren to be VP, so what does that tell you?